Yes, that was President Ford in an interview. He didn't say he opposed the war, just that he opposed the justification on weapons of mass destruction, which uh, may or may not have been correct, but he did tell Bush he favored the war and the mission in the war to expand democracy and freedom to the Middle East. Now, a new Iraq plan may be announced as soon as next week. The question is, is the troop surge the winning strategy President Bush has been looking for? Joining me now is Jed Babin, former Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for President Bush 41. He's also a columnist for Real Clear Politics. And Joe Srincioni, Senior VP for National Security at the Center for American Progress. Okay, Jed Babin, have you come around to the troop surge or are you still opposed to it? I'm still pretty much opposed to it, Larry. I don't know what we're going to do with another 10 or 20 or 30,000 troops there. You're not going to clear and hold Sadr City. It's 2.4 million people. You're not going to clear and hold the rest of Baghdad. I want to know what we're going to do before we send more folks into that milieu. I don't see that the president has defined victory in a way that is reachable and even in a way that is realistic. To achieve victory there, and I've said it a hundred times, I'll keep saying it until it happens, we have to take on both Syria and Iran and defeat the nations that are sponsoring terrorism against us. All right, Joe Srincion, there's a very important story in the Washington Post uh, by General Keen and General Jack Keene and Frederick Kagan of the American Enterprise Institute. Uh, they briefed Bush on the troop surge. They strongly support the truth surge. And, Joe, they used his rationale, changed the military mission. Instead of transitioning for Iraqi control, the mission should bring security to the Iraqi population. And they say that is the traditional counterinsurgency approach, and they recommend, I don't know, 30,000 or more troops for at least 18 months. Joe, your take? Yeah, well, there's a small minority of uh, national security experts that favor this surge, and you just quoted two of them. The problem is we've tried this kind of surge before. Just last September, we surged troops into Baghdad to try to have a bigger presence, to try to bring security and quell the violence. The problem is the violence increased with our surge, as did the U.S. body count during the months of September and then October. The surge strategy is a very risky strategy. The reason that President Bush is, seems to be heading towards that strategy is that he doesn't know what else to do. Iraq is in chaos, his policy is in chaos, his political support here at home has collapsed, but he doesn't want to leave. He doesn't want to take the advice of the Iraq study group, of the Democrats in Congress, and start a redeployment of U.S. troops out. So he's gambling. He appears to be ready to throw more logs on the fire, to have more Americans sacrifice their lives for his mistake. Well, Jed Babin, I mean, it's probably not tragic that Mr. Bush is not listening to the advice of Democrats and the Iraqi study group. I think you would still agree with that. But I want to come back to the troop surge because General Keene and, and, and Fred Kagan say, look, we need to clear and hold. We can't clear and turn it over to the Iraqi army yet. We need to have Americans do that. And it seems to me as a potential prescription for some kind of victory there, which I personally favor, it's a good idea. Why are you so intransigent, Jed? Well, I don't think I'm intransigent, Larry, at all. I'm just realistic. I think if you want to clear and hold, and if you want to do that as a predicate to pursuing security in Iraq, which we all would like to see, you can't do it with 30 or 40,000 troops. You're going to have to put 100 or 120,000 more troops in there, clear and hold. The Iraqis, we can clear. The Iraqis can't hold. That's the problem we have right now. And if you want to wait and have clear and hold work, you may have to wait forever because the Iraqis are not coming around to the capability to actually be able to hold what we have cleared. You're not going to be able to clear out the Muqtada al-Sadr forces from Sadr City because Maliki won't let you. What are we going to do with these troops? Either they're way too many to do nothing or they're many, many, many too few to actually do what we could do. Joe Serenzioni, I don't, look, it, let me just ask you this. I, this is an honest question because I am somewhat befuddled by this whole story. Okay, so let's say we get up and leave. That's what the Iraq study group wants. That's what the Democrats want. We get up and leave. And then it's just a clear shootout, swing out to the death from the Sunnis and the Shias. Is that what you want, Joe? Is that where we need to go here after all this? 
Well, let's start with some basic facts here. This is a show about numbers. Let's look at the numbers from Iraq from just last month. In December, 113 American soldiers were killed last month. They're dying at the rate of about four a day. Horrific numbers. 122 Iraqi soldiers were killed. What does that tell you? That means that the U.S. is still shouldering at least half, probably more, of the burden. The Iraqis aren't ready to take it over from us yet. But the really horrific number is 1,800 civilians killed in this Sunni Shia So let me get this right, Joe. War. In a war, Larry. if casualties are taken, even though these are casualty numbers, bad as they always are in human life terms, the reality is they are among the lowest casualty numbers of any war this nation has ever fought. Do we always withdraw? Even though the cause may be just, do we always withdraw simply on the basis of casualty numbers? Of course not. But, but Larry, you know we've been fighting this war longer than we fought World War II. And the, Larry, pro the problem's getting worse, not better. And the numbers that, ma that matter the most in that count for me are the 1,800 um, Iraqi civilians who were killed in what is clearly a civil war. That is not a war we can win. We cannot insert ourselves in between those groups and separate them out. We, as, as your Larry. other guest just said, we don't have the numbers to do that. That's why you have to start redeploying right. troops from this. And I favor putting 20 thousand troops into Afghanistan, a war we can still win, and if we keep this obsession with Iraq, we're going to lose Afghanistan too. That's the real danger of the President's surge strategy. All right, Jed. Larry, this whole thing, Joe is proposing a strategy that's designed to do only one thing, to prove George Bush was wrong and to prove that we were wrong in going into Iraq. He's not interested in victory. What I'm trying to describe is a way to end the terrorist threat to the United States. It doesn't it, it always matters that we have American casualties. The issue with American casualties is a sacred bond. Use my life, spend it if you have to, but don't waste it. The question is not whether we have four killed or 400 killed. For heaven's sake, we lost 21,000 men on Iwo Jima. This is a big, big battle. Jed Babin, do we know how to win a war? Jed Babin, do we know how to win a war? Do we have not it, what it takes to win a war Harry, in this country? W some people do. Apparently, President Bush does not. President Bush does not? Yes, sir. I think President Bush has been as steadfast as any person on this planet. How can you say Bush does Larry, not? Larry, I love the guy, but we have stuck ourselves in a self-imposed quagmire in Iraq. We are not dealing with Syria. We are not dealing with Iran. We are not dealing with the, the Saudis who are inflaming sectarian violence in Iraq. We are not taking care of business where we need to. No, I, believe, a proxy war. I think President Bush has been strong, steadfast, steadfast, great character. The only other person I can think of who has been as strong as him in winning this thing and preserving some modicum of democracy and stability is Senator John McCain. And I think they both deserve a lot of credit. Jed Babin, thank you. Joe Serencioni, thank, thank you. you. Up next, Congress.